The kids have, uh, have mentioned multiple times how much they miss Lindsay. You know, they miss, they miss their mom. They, they miss her snuggles, her hugs, her uh, just genuine love for them and everything that we did. They, uh, still days where I wonder when she's gonna walk back through the door. You know, and I know my kids think the exact same thing. And they still, they still talk about her. We still keep her memory alive. You know, Lindsay, Lindsay was perfect for all of us. She, she took care of all of us. And uh, not having her here has been a very hard transition. Dad, did you get us notebooks? I've had a lot of extensive training in the military to help deal with situations like this, but this isn't something that uh, you can ever be fully prepared for. Losing, losing your spouse to uh, somebody else's bad decision is, uh, it's, a, it's a hard deal. And I arrived home, started picking some stuff up, thinking about what we were gonna have for dinner. And it started getting kind of late, and I realized that, okay, she's picking the kids up from daycare. So I texted her, called her, couldn't get her to, you know, respond back at all. And with that, I um, saw something on Facebook that there was a crash in Foley. 154, I need you to respond to Foley. I had a bad feeling and started driving towards town. Highway 23 and 11th Avenue. And I got there, and Both lanes will be blocked. on scene, could, I couldn't see anything. I didn't know what was going on. Rick, did you copy? There's going to be extrication involved and awful children. I had to get a hold of State Patrol. I'm going to have you go priority one. I was told that Lindsay and the kids had been involved in a crash. Chuck, you're responding priority one to a motor vehicle accident. And Lindsay didn't make it. And I uh, fell to my knees, cried, could, uh, didn't really know how to handle myself at that point because all, all three of my children were in the vehicle. Um, my youngest, who was just over a year, year and a couple months, had a broken femur. And my four-year-old, he suffered a broken leg, uh, had a pretty severe laceration on his forehead. And uh, my oldest, who was five, she had bruising on her hips and from seatbelt. I don't think there's a sick injury. I had to tell my daughter, my oldest daughter, the next day that Lindsay had passed. It's very difficult to tell a five-year-old that they're never going to see their mom again. Because at that age, they don't quite fully understand that mom's gone. You know, Lindsay's, Lindsay's not coming back, and, you know, it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's very hard, and it, it still comes up. It was six o'clock at night, so I, I had, at first I didn't think there's no way somebody's impaired, but uh, that night they they told me that it, it was an alleged impaired driver. Which one do you want? The little one. The little one. The life that I now have to live is forever changed, and that's something that uh, the impaired driver has to live with. And I also have three children that now have to live without their mother. One dog. How are we gonna make them? Until the bottom part is like kind of gold and kind of not gold. Yeah, Lindsay was the the perfect mom. She uh, really uh, really embraced having a family. Loved every minute of it. A stay-at-home mom, you know, and she. Uh, she did everything she could to make everybody happy. And now it's gone. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll never see her again. Bumpy road. Nice job, buddy. Bumpy road. As a member of the National Guard, there's, there's the phrase in, in our resiliency training that you gotta hunt the good stuff. Hold my hand. And, okay. From the moment I found out, I've been trying to hunt for any kind of good that I could find in this situation. And Lindsay and I had always said that if something was to ever happen, that we'd hoped it would be one of us and our kids would 
survive whatever happened. Dad, high five my foot again. And I'm very grateful that there was people on scene right away to get the kids out of there and you know do the best that they could till emergency services arrived. If you have a couple drinks, make that phone call. If you're uh, impaired in any way, stay there. Don't leave. There's no, there's nothing that important. I'm left here as a widower at the age of 33 to raise my three young children. Your decision could, could wreck somebody else's lives forever.